All right, guys, it's finally that time to start up the Audi RS3. I must say, I'm very, very excited, but a bit nervous at the same time, because let's face it, anything can happen, right? Bismillah, let's go. Big moment, guys, as usual. Let's go, let's start this beast. Oh, damn. Christmas tree, that's what you call it. Suspension, suspension. Suspension fault, you can continue driving, parking aid. Engine light, ABS light, lost communication with turbo supercharger, O2 sensor, camshaft sensor, turbo charger, the list goes on. Flipping hell, that's the most expensive pads I've ever come across. Alright, let's do a sound check on this beast. Let's go, let's do it. Yes people, it's finally that day to put the Audi RS3 engine back in where it came from. Here it is, fully built up, the Dazza engine, 2.5 litre, 5 cylinder, ready to go. When I bought this car, it came in as a non-runner for timing issues, but we have fully forged this engine with pistons, rods, valves, you name it. And of course not to mention the hybrid turbo, definitely don't forget that. This car is going to be pushing around 800 to 850 bhp, very excited to get started. First of all, we're going to take the engine off the stand and put it onto the lift and then attach the gearbox, the transfer box and then re-enter the engine back into the car from underneath. Can't wait for this, so let's get started. You know I'm so gassed up right about now. It's been nearly, what, two months I think I bought this car and it's been stuck on this ramp ever since. Very excited to just get it off. I wonder how the first start's going to sound. We're just going to have to wait and find out. For those of you watching for the first time, I have fully forged this engine with JE pistons forged rods, even the valve train, we got Supertech valves, this is a TC Turbos 870, so it can support up to 870 bhp, and we'll soon find out what we're able to get out of it, once we get a car up and running, look at this, absolute beast, love the Viper green colour, Thirty minutes later, we've put the engine onto the engine lift, and we have now made the gearbox, to the engine we've got a few more bolts to secure the gearbox completely onto the engine one more thing we've got to do in the rear which is the transfer box which is again attached to the gearbox and i think at that point we're ready to lift the vehicle and slide the engine back in let's go now to put the transfer box in all you gotta do is slide it in and um, yeah, as you can see it's easier said than done <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time. Let's go. Let's lift the ramp up, get the car up in the air, and roll the engine underneath. Right, so now we've got the engine underneath. So this is the part where we have to lower the ramp slowly, fit the engine back in without damaging any pipes or getting, or getting it caught anywhere. As you can see, the clearance is very tight. So we've got to be careful when lowering the engine down, when lowering the car down. The engine's here. Slow down, slow down. See what I mean? We've got pipes here, we've got parts, gearbox. We've got to be very careful right now. So now we're going to manually lift the engine up as it's safer to do so rather than lowering a four ton ramp down so now that the engine is lined up with the engine mount all we're going to do is secure two or three bolts i think it is and what that's going to do is attach the engine to the car and that's it once that's done So yeah, once that's done, we can then um, attach the prop shaft, down pipe, exhaust system, and uh, pretty much start the car up eventually. 
finally engine back to where it belongs. So what we're doing now is basically lifting the engine a little just to line it up. As you can see the engine is a bit low on this side. Pull off all the lifts out of the way. On goes the subframe. Now this connects the control arms, the suspension, the anti-roll bar, all of that stuff. Once that goes on, I think we can put on the mid section of the exhaust. Prop shaft is on already, as you can see. Yeah man, not long to go. Before we crank this beast up. What we don't want to do is box the car fully and then start it up and realize there's something wrong with it and we just strip everything back down again or even half of the things just to get to the car. So it's always better to like put a few of the components and then test out the car. I did, I did, I always had it, it not Yeah, we'll touch it. All right, guys, it's finally that time to start up the Audi RS3. We have the engine in, the intakes are fitted, turbocharger, drive shafts, subframe, you name it. All this car needs now is to start it up for the first time. I must say, I'm very, very excited, but a bit nervous at the same time, because let's face it, anything can happen, right? So all we gotta do now is the battery is completely flat. So we're gonna apply a booster pack to this and give it a start. So that's the positive terminal there, and then you just attach it to the negative terminal, which is somewhere in the engine bay, right there. I think there's only one more step left, guys. It's the easy part, pressing the start button. You ready? All right, bismillah, let's go. Remote control key, hold back of key against the marked area. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The battery is flat, the key battery is flat. Hmm. What, no power? No, no power. Everything is cut. No power, must be the booster. Try again. No. No. Earth. Something. Not starting up at the moment. Uh, it seems to be an electric issue for now. There seems to be no power. What, you think there's no charge in this? Yeah. Oh, damn. Just when we're about to start the car, there's no charge in that booster. That's fun, isn't it? Now I have to charge that up and try again. All right, it is what it is. So it turns out that the battery is completely flat. So yeah, we have to order some more parts. That's what you get in this trade, constant parts ordering. Never finishes, trust me. And this is what you might expect to see when a car is having a rebuild. That's right, you got a snail there alongside spider webs, spiders, just like the GT60 Fiesta, remember? New battery has arrived, of course, in Viper Green to match the color of the car. Just joking, but yeah, let's get this installed and let's crack up the beast. Look at the state of this car, man. What is all this? I know it's been parked up, but where does all this come from? Oh, damn. Here we go, out with the old, in with the new. Viper Green battery. Shoot the Viper Green RS3. So, is it gonna start the first time? Or are we gonna have issues? Big moment, guys, as usual. Let's go, let's start this beast. Oh, damn. That's a first time spot. The Audi RS3 is finally up and running guys. Check it out. Madness. Oh my days man. What's going on? Everything good? Hold on, hold on. Is there any phone codes? Yeah. Oh, check that out for phone codes. Christmas tree. That's what you call it. Suspension. Suspension fault. You can continue driving. Parking aid. Engine light. ABS light. 
It's not misfiring or anything though. It's running good. The idle is perfectly fine. There you go, look. ESC fault, hill hold assist fault, cruise control system. Amazing stuff, man. We finally got the Audi RS3 started up. So now what we need to do is basically plug the machine in, scan for fault codes and see what comes up. So let's plug in the diagnostic machine and let's see what we find. I have to say I'm so so happy right now because after two months of rebuilding this engine and um, all the delays we've had with parts and stuff, here we have the Darzal 2.5 liter RS3 engine up and running. Definitely, definitely a great feeling man. And as you can see from the engine, it's running very very smooth, perfectly fine. We're gonna just pull up the follicles now so you guys can see what's coming up for it. So happy about this. I just can't wait to hit the streets now. Because don't forget, the engine is a forged build. This ain't no standard RS3 running 400 brake. This is going to be pushing well over 800 bhp guys. So make sure you stay tuned for the next episode. But for now, let's jump onto the full codes. So at the moment, I'm just scanning the car. And as you can see, it's pulled up so far 41 full codes. It's going through every module of the car, one by one. It goes without saying, we're going to clear all these fault codes first and see what comes back because a lot of them are obviously because all the wiring looms and whatnot were disconnected. So yeah, 44 fault codes. So if you check under engine, engine oil pressure below lower limit, lost communication with turbo supercharger, O2 sensor, camshaft sensor, turbocharger, the list goes on, the list goes on. So let's clear these fault codes. Let's see what comes back. So upon clearing it, we've only got two more fault codes. Nothing on the engine, which is good. Let's start it back up and we'll see what comes back on. That exhaust sounds good, man. But yeah, look, no more engine lights at the moment. I didn't expect it to come back because the engine is running super smooth. You got the traction control light, tire pressure, cruise control, ABS as well. But don't forget, the wheels are not on yet. So of course, you're gonna get some sort of fault codes on that. And um, when the car's on the ramp, it doesn't to get on and drive off sometimes to clear the fault codes fully. But for now, right now, it's looking good, man. It's looking amazing. So let's see what comes back on the engine. So on the engine, we have invalid data from the vehicle dynamic control module. Again, as you can see, you've got other fault codes on for the steering angle sensor. So at the moment, I wouldn't really worry about that fault code because the car is still on the ramp and uh, the rules are not on. So I'm sure the car detected some sort of issue in that so yeah i think right now the only thing we need to do is put the wheels on and hit the roads yeah man you know one thing we haven't done yet yeah we have to rev this engine let's hear it man all right let's do a sound check on this beast let's go let's do it that is mad yes that is too much. The RS3 is alive. Can't believe it, man. So <laughs> what the hell? That's banging away like crazy, man. What do you say? I think the car's mapped from before. It's got a tune in it because the car had a hybrid turbo previously. So as you can see, the engine is definitely tuned up. You heard the pops and bangs, but look at this. The gearbox shifts all the way to 7.5 RPM, so it's got a TCU tune on it as well. Also, I don't know if you guys talked before, but look, inspected by Motor Novo. So this is more like a repositioned vehicle. God knows what happened to it. But all I know is on my hand right now, and I'm mega, mega excited to run this car on the road, man. So damn excited. The exhaust sounds absolutely lethal, man. Can you rev it one more time? Nuts. Absolutely nuts, man. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode so far. We finally got it up and running, but we've got many more stages to go. Next, we're going to hit the streets, data log it, see everything's fine on the road before we are forced fine tune it, not fine tune it, we're going to tune it completely because we've got a massive hybrid turbo charger on there. We've got an 870X turbo which can support obviously 870bhp. Before we hit the streets, as you know, the mirror cap's missing so we've got some nice carbon fiber ones to go on there. Look at that. 
Yeah, complete the look. It's got carbon everywhere this car has. Front, back, side. So we just bought some matching pair of carbon fiber caps for both sides. No, <laughs> there's no point of that, is there? If anyone wants this, come grab it. It's still good to be used. Wow, that start sounds amazing. And in case you didn't notice, this car actually got the cold start disabled. So it would have been even louder when we first started it up. One thing as well, and I've been going on about the ceramic brakes in this car that it came with. And if you don't know, 10 grand option from Audi, 10 grand option. And if you look in there, the pads are literally very rusty, but that's not what I'm concerned about. It's about this much, basically metal to metal, shall I say, or ceramic to ceramics. We're gonna have to change the brake pads. And you know what? I've got a feeling it's not gonna be very cheap. Let's go in the office and let's find out because I'm gonna have to get the pads changed before I hit the streets because those pads are too low. And would I risk these brake discs getting damaged? Absolutely not. Five grand each, five grand each. Let's not ruin the discs for some brake pads. But let's find out how much they are first. Right, as you can see, just pull up the system. Here's your ceramic discs. Let's actually check how much they are. This is five grand each, but let's see, for real. Yeah, I was right. 4.8K plus the VAT. So it's actually like six grand just for the brake discs. What we need is the pads, which is number 10. Let's see how much that is. Flipping hell. That's the most expensive pads I've ever come across. 700 pound plus the VAT. So yeah, I guess. That's a surprise. I'm looking at another 700 pounds, but I can't complain because these brakes are worth four, five grand. I think no more than that. Seven, eight grand used on eBay. So yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. I'll tell you that. Thank you very much guys for tuning in. I'm very, very excited to bring you this project. The Audi RS3 Daza rebuild, Forge rebuild. We've got many episodes to come for this. So make sure you stay tuned. Hopefully by next Sunday, I can drop another one where we hit the streets with it. As you know, it's a full rebuild with brand new piston rings. We do have to bed the engine in for I think around 800 miles. So I'll be doing that, enjoying some miles on the RS3 before we end up tuning it and pushing it for more power. By the way, talking about the Audi RS3 and putting more power, I want to show you guys something. Check this out. We've got a massive care package straight from where? The USA. And guess where he's from? That's right, Dynojet. We have a Dynojet straight from USA. This is basically a dyno to measure BHP. And this is gonna be levels for us when it comes to tuning performance cars like this. And the plan is, to be honest, get this installed over here as soon as possible. And then when I do tune the RS3, I'll be able to show you the results afterwards. The power, we're gonna be running on it and um, everything tuning A to Z, all on the dyno. Can't wait, so look forward to that. We've got many, many exciting things to come here at Boost Performance. But anyway guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I said that again now, but yeah man, very excited, that's why. I'll see you guys next week when we hit the streets for the first time. Who knows, there might be more issues. <laughs> Just joking, let's see, let's find out. As you can see, the garage is a bit smoked up right now. We've got decat and it's had a fresh rebuild. So yeah, we're gonna have to get that smoke to clear out a little bit. Very, very normal for a rebuild to smoke a little bit, especially from the engine bay, you got the silicon burning off and the, and the exhaust as well. Get ready, next week, 800 brake, 850 brake, we're gonna hit the streets. If you remember my GT63S, it wasn't so straightforward. When we started the car up, we had a full code for the timing and we had to do so much diagnosing to get to the bottom of the fault. This one seems a lot more straightforward, at least for now. I guess we'll find out the case once we hit the streets. So guys, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.